So the eclipse was today. <laughs> We're still here. Hey, it's Romania Black. Yeah, the eclipse was today. I went outside where I actually live. It was total totality. So for about four minutes, the entire sun was blocked out by the moon. It was quiet. It was still. It was dark. It felt like night, like the temperature dropped 10 degrees. And the craziest thing, the owls around, because I'm in a very rural area, the owls started hooting, and then after a few minutes when the sun started to peek back out from the eclipse, the owls didn't know what to do, and so they, like, stopped mid-hoot, and they were like, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I was like, ah! So, yeah, I was pretty excited. Today was the eclipse. Uh, I got to witness it in 2018, and where I'm at, it's, like, right directly on the path, which is super exciting, and I got to see it. So I was very, very excited, and I was looking around for Zod and the Skull Knight, but... No such luck. So, so how have y'all been? Um, if you're watching this on Patreon and YouTube, it's only been a week since you've seen a volume, what was it, volume 13? Um, but it's been like 10 days since I've watched or read any Berserk. So it feels like it's been a millennia. It feels like it's been 216 years <laughs> since I've seen, since I've seen this. So I'm really excited to jump back into volume 14 because when we last left off, um, we, we caught up with the anime. It's every bit as traumatic as I expected it to be, and then some. <laughs> the only silver lining has literally been the Skull Knight. I, Zod is, it's interesting. At first, I thought that Zod was going to have the role that the Skull Knight currently has. I thought Zod was going to be the one to kind of take guts under his wing and kind of like teach him things, but that seems to be relegated to the Skull Knight, so that's interesting. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Um, I'm excited to see what else we get with the Skull Knight. Super excited about that. Um, but Casca, she's maybe a target in this volume, so we gotta go deal with that. Although the cover of volume 14 seems to suggest that it's not gonna be a big thing unless she dies in this volume, which would be horrific. Um, but I like Guts declaring war on Griffith, being like, you son of a bitch, look at all this madness and horrible things you've caused. Now I'm going to kill all these apostles and work my way back to you and make you pay. And I can't blame Guts a bit. Can't blame him a bit. Um, there are a ton of comments with volume 12 and 13 that I've not been able to get to yet because like I said, I've been gone. So I haven't had a chance to, to read it. But I, I did want to talk about uh, Moomin, Moomin's comment for volume this coming volume, the idea of Griffith may have been disoriented. It's talking about when Griffith fell on fell on Casca in the uh, wagon before the eclipse happens talking about how Griffith may have been disoriented in the moment when he flopped over on Casca, but it was definitely a manipulative move to pry her from Guts's grasp, and it worked. It guilt-tripped her into staying behind and not leaving with Guts, and it, it just adds insult to injury when Griffith actually does assault her later on. It's like this idea of this theme of loving and letting go was a big theme the last couple of volumes and, you know, the whole gaslighting by the God hand. I like, I, I think the only comment I've seen so far, but I didn't get a chance to reply back to them was somebody, somebody being like, can I make a controversial yet brave statement? <laughs> I think the God hands are jerks. Yes. The God hands are, they're the worst. I hate them all so much. And that's the point. You're supposed to hate them, right? So anyway, I'm really excited. It's been, it's been a long time since I've read a volume of Berserk. It's the day of the eclipse. So as I'm recording this, I felt it was necessary that I uh, read some Berserk. I love that Twitter, I've been trying to stay off of Twitter because I don't want spoilers because I'm just now getting past the anime part that I feel most viewers know of. So I feel like that part's not going to spoil me, but I don't know anything about the manga so far. So I've been trying to stay away from Twitter or social media, but I did see um, Team Four Star. They posted a big thing about the eclipse and the behelots. And is your behelot working? <laughs> They're like, let me call customer service. And it was guts. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I like Team Four Star a lot. They're really funny. So I thought that was great. But yeah, I 
am totally ready to dive into this volume and see what we get. Before we start, though, we have a lot of new patrons over on Patreon, and I never get a chance during the anime to thank the philanthropy tier because I had recorded so far ahead um, that I didn't know if it would be up to date when the episodes would come out. But I do want to give a special shout out to our philanthropy tier over on Patreon who helped support me in getting the deluxe editions that I am reading with you now. So you guys are able to see the deluxe editions alongside me because of Patreon support, which I am so appreciative for. So a special shout out to our new patrons. We have Alex Cornejo, Anime Annie, Be Happy, Dana, Destiny Marie, Danger Zone, Eric Kiri, Lyndon, Matthew Palfinier, Shimoyama, Sunspots, Trails, Translucent Men, Nameless Monster, Murphew, Nicholas, uh, Matteo El Fidel, Boo Boo El Freya, Danny Don Mai, and Donovan. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. All of my love. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited y'all. I, we're entering no man's land. I feel like maybe there'll be a little bit of a turnaround, a little bit of a tie back to episode one of Berserk, the 1997 anime, because of that whole like Guts's arm and everything. Maybe we're going to tie back to that. But after this, we, we, I don't know what's going to happen. And I can't wrap my mind around, I don't know what's going to happen because I keep thinking, oh, we'll tie back to the anime. No, it, we're done. And that part's over. So I, I brought Whiteboard Coon out just in case. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know if, if we're going to need Whiteboard Coon or what. But I feel like we might. So let's just see. So I poured some coffee. I'm ready to go, y'all. I hope y'all are too. But we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive right into Berserk, Volume 14. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, And... Let's go. I just love the Skull Knight. Tally ho! <laughs> As he like goes away. It's adorable. Um, and then, yeah, this this opening here. You see Guts has the knives now of Judo around his front there on that image. And he still has the knife he's always had. But he also has like, um, it looks like another pouch there. It looks like maybe the armor is representing more of Pippin. I, he looks just sad. Guts doesn't look vengeful and declarative of war like he did in the last chapter. He just looks sad. And I am sad for Guts. And that girl looks like the girl that was in the, the opening episode one that was assaulted that he uh, helped out. It's hard being a feminist icon, you know. Oh, we did decide that we were not going to look at the table of contents. So I'm not going to read the table of contents. I'm going to try not to even look at it um, because it had been requested. That way I don't know what I'm getting into in this volume. So that's exciting. But we have Skull Knight uh, moving forward with his naked woman horse bodice there. It's weird. If you look at the horse, like where, where the horse's nostrils is, it looks like eyes and a mouth where its teeth are. And then it's like, like the head on a woman. It's weird. Demon infant. Ooh, I'm assuming they're talking about Griffith. Okay. Through the night forest, just like wind. You said this makes twice you've carried me. What's that mean? He's like, I carried you both from that otherworldly land. And he's like, he's like, don't thank me. It was incidental. I like that Guts hadn't even thanked him. <laughs> I like the sky. Like he's like, Guts says, what? Excuse me. He's like, don't thank me. <laughs> That's so funny. This has some connection. He's like, who the hell are you? I am the foe of the inhumans. That's all I'll say for now. Oh man, what a freaking tease, Skull Knight. Come on now. I I feel like the Skull Knight, I'm gonna, he doesn't want to say, and I'm like, but why not? So, okay, we're gonna put over here, we're gonna get our Skull Knight on here and just tie in that he is the foe of the Inhumans all he can say for now skull knight how dare you so okay so he's he's an ally potentially of guts now why he says he's a foe of the inhumans i don't know what we're getting with that but we'll see and he's like why did you bring us to the mountains i've never told anyone about this place i merely brought you to the nearest safe place to that otherworldly gate Ooh, formerly elves lived in the mountains 
Even though the elves have left, the earth's energy is strong. It was a suitable place in which to hide from those of the darkness. Okay, so if we're tying this to this, we're going to connect Puck to this now because we have Puck over here and being an... We're going to put Puck here. To me, what it sounds like is Puck is a way to like go against the darkness. So I'm curious about Puck's friend that traumatized Rickert if the elves are just naturally resistant to the darkness and to demons. That would make sense. That's interesting. He's like, I didn't know you had a connection to the place. And so it was chance. He's like, Godo mentioned it once. Okay. Again, I like, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to go with the laws of causality, then we have this idea that Guts knows about it through these threads and the Skull Knight didn't know that. Go with that. What saved you from death was the elf dust your friend had by chance with him. Ah, indeed. And he's like the elf dust. Medicine of the highest quality. It's not easy to come by. Seldom do elves reveal themselves to humans. Maybe you have some tie to the elves. Oh, interesting. I mean, I, I don't think that Guts is part elf, even though he does have little elven ears. I think that's just a Miura art thing. Um... But I do like this kind of foreshadowing that Guts is going to meet Puck. It's almost like the Skull Knight's trying to work through it and be like, is there a way you're going to be tied to the elves? And it's like all these things are connecting Guts to Puck. Could be. Even so, I suppose you have no desire to believe in destiny and such. And yeah, Guts is like, look, I just got out of this whole thing with Griffith. I ain't going to talk about destiny. I just saw what that leads to. And I don't really want any part of this. If we're supposed to hide ourselves, why is Casca? Perhaps she's gone outside the cave. If she doesn't want the evil spirits to approach, she mustn't leave that place. All the better if it's a place in the sunlight. Once the sun sets or if she walks in the dark forest, the dead will gather around her just like what happened to you. And he's like, no, wait a minute. She has to stay inside that cellar. Oh, so she can't leave. Ah, uh, Gmira. Oh, crap. No, she also has a history of trying to jump off of things. So it would only make sense she wants to leap off of it. Crap. Uh, damn it. Damn it, Casca. No. Something's wrong. The evil spirits aren't inflicting harm upon her, but so many are gathered. Why? Oh. Oh, shit. Is she pregnant? Mira? What the fuck? Is she? What? Oh, shit. Ew. No. Oh, my God. Oh, why couldn't it? Ew, ew, ew. <gasps> Did she miscarry it? Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? But why? Ew! Ew! Oh, I mean, there's a chance it's not just Griffiths because she was raped by a lot of demons, but Mira, well, it does have that eye. Oh my God. What the fudge? Oh, it's a demon. Oh, Oh my God, but it might not have, oh my God, it might not have been hers and Griffith's. It could have been hers and Guts's. Oh my God. Oh, which was only just conceived. Well, I mean, was possessed by evil. Oh, probably due to her sexual relations with the new God hand. Oh my God. Uh, oh my God. Why? It's a cursed child. Oh my God, it's gotten huge. Why? 
That's no human child. Someday it will bring woe upon you both. Yeah, I mean, technically it's Griffiths, but... Ugh. Why? Why? Ugh. This is a demon. One of those who devoured our comrades and made you this way. God, and the... The symbolism of guts stripping this child away that's not supposed to exist and him not supposed to exist. I mean, the correlation's not lost to me, but what the fuck, Mira? Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, it died. Oh, they just like, they just killed it. It died. Ew. Well, that solves the question of if she was going to be pregnant with his child. Ah. Oh. oh. So it's your child. Son of a bitch! This doesn't mean as become dust like other evil spirits chased by the light is slipped into a place nearer the world of the dead. Someday, it will appear before you both again. All children yearn for their parents, as do demons in their own way. Oh. Oh, and then Rickard, of course, go. Oh, and then the skull knight's gonna disappear. We will likely meet again, should destiny dictate. If you mean to pursue the Inhumans, follow the guidance of that brand. It reacts strongly to evil, but bear this in mind: yours is a black path through the night. When you confront those who lurk in the darkness, you will also envelop yourself in it. Good journey, struggler. Okay, so, uh, damn it, damn it. I'm kind of just, <laughs> what are we, what are we, we're 10 minutes into this. I am just absolutely floored, so. Damn. So the I okay, but here's the thing: if we're gonna if we're gonna examine this thoroughly, and we're gonna be reasonable with this, then it was Guts's child because like it, it kept growing really bigger and bigger and bigger because it was like infected by evil. But I'm gonna go back and look through this. But oh my god! But the idea was that the idea was that it was it probably was their child, possibly, but we don't know. But there's the thing: we don't know. We don't, I mean, if you were at first going by, if it had stayed the size that it was originally, if it had stayed that size from the beginning, then sure. If it had stayed that size when she miscarried it, then there's a strong possibility that we could argue that it was Guts and Her's child because of the size that it was and the length of time since they'd conceived. That would have made sense and have been like, okay, it was possessed by evil from Griffith assaulting her and that caused her to miscarry and caused it to be infected by evil and become a demon. Okay. But the thing about it is because it instantly started getting bigger and bigger, there's no way to fully know was it Guts or was it Griffiths? We don't know. Guts seemed to have accepted that it was his. Well, the thing that kills me is that it's not just that Guts 
It's not whether Guts accepted this demon baby as the demon infant as his or Griffith's. It's the fact that he felt for Casca, who just lost this child, and I, and he felt worse for her. It was like, oh. I'm going to real quickly um, reference Heaven Official's Blessing. So I'm going to try to remember to put a spoiler thing up here. But if you've not read Heaven Official's Blessing, you might want to avoid once this is gone. Um, in that series... There's a character who loves a woman and she and him, her and him get together and she conceives and she ends up getting the child taken out of her forcibly and infected with a demonic presence and it becomes a demon too. So it becomes like a little ghost baby. And so it kind of roams around. <laughs> it kind of roams around and like plagues the father and it's mad at the father for whatever reason. The dad's not responsible for her miscarrying the baby, but the baby blames him and has, is very antagonistic towards him. So this reminds me a lot of that character in Heaven Official's Blessing. Like Guts reminds me of the dad in Heaven Official's Blessing who has to deal with his demon baby child that's mad at him for whatever reason. And he's like, what did I do to deserve this? I have a feeling that that demon kid is going to come back. I am not going to be surprised if Griffith is like, that's my child. And it's gonna be like, oh my God. I'm just like, Mira, what else are you gonna do to Casca? Are you are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Can we be done? I just the the assault on Casca as a character, as well as figuratively and literally in the story, is appalling to me. And I'm sure some people have commented that, you know, Mira was young when he wrote this, but uh I've said my piece. I just, a di I, I would say this is a disappointing Romania moment with Mira, but then I'm like, okay, so are you going to, is, if you're going to bring that demon baby back later on and use it as a tie-in to Griffith, to Guts' his own, you know, relationship with his father, his father figure and all that, and you're going to tie that back in together, then... Sure, I can see where Mira is going with this, but I'm like having to watch a woman miscarry a demon baby and it latch onto her. I was waiting for it to like start suckling at her boob. And if it did that, I was going to be done. I was going to be like, you know what? It's been fun. <laughs> it's been real. It's been a great eclipse, but Romania's out. But I'm glad that didn't happen. But Skull Knight seems to think that it's Guts' baby. Skull Knight seem to think that it's Guts' baby. Now, whether it's actually Guts' child or it's Griffith's, I mean, when Guts opens his eye up there and he looks shocked that the Skull Knight is suggesting that it's his child that's been that's been miscarried because of everything going on, the eye does look a lot like the eye of the baby. So children yearn for their parents, as do demons in their own ways. My thing is the Skull Knight brings up this idea of children yearning for their parents. I, how does the Skull Knight know this? What is going on? This mysterious Skull Knight that's come in to be a deus ex machina and give us brief exposition. I'm just floored, y'all. I'm just floored. I, what do we do with this? Okay. Armament. Oh, guts looking real good there. I want to see how he gets the metal arm. I don't know if we're going to find that out. I love the cloak that he dons and the cape looks a lot like the Skull Knights. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Ugh. Uh. Uh. Dumbass, what are you doing in the road? Is it a demon? Sun's up and vanishes. Nothing but bad omens. Sacrifice. Do the demons just, when the sun is out, do the demons, like, start to, like, recede or, like, condense, maybe? Interesting. Okay. Oh, I like Rickert and Erica working together. Oh. I mean, like, Goto's like, little kid, you going to do some work around here? <laughs> oh, I love they're kind of, like, the same size. It's super cute. I want Rickert and Erica to, to grow up together and get married. I, I'm not asking for much. Can we have one happy ending, Mira, in this story? Can we have one? Just one. Just give me one. Let Rickard and Erica be happy together. I'm only asking for one thing. I don't think that's much. Oh, my daddy's so good. He's famous in town. Oh. Wow, he's a genius. Look at Rickard. He's so... I get such an Armin vibe from him. A dragon slayer. Oh, there we go. 
bring him a sword that could kill a dragon. Ah! I got sick of working for nobles. Swords are just large butcher knives, after all. Ooh, they're tools meant for killing people. A sword that could butcher a dragon. If anyone could handle this, it'd just be a hindrance. I don't like losing track of the essence of a tool, but that's exactly what I did. And this is a good reminder. Wow. So he like came, so he just left the castle after that because he was like, this is my, this is my magnum opus. This is the best I can do. I, but that's perfect for guts to kill a dragon, you say. Mm. Can it kill one? Could this kill a dragon? If there were any dragons. I like, I'm glad, I was gonna wonder there. I was like, are there dragons in this world? Wouldn't be surprised if there are. We have elves. We have demons. Not surprised by that. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah. I'm like, are there actually any dragons? No. This ain't what you'd call a sword. It's a slab of iron you can't even... Kill. It's for killing dragons and monsters that aren't even real. Well, we, we've seen some of those. Your friend looks like he's about to fight a dragon. He wants to fight even after losing his hand and his eye. Dragons are because humans can't beat them. Ooh. Oh, man. Look at Guts. Damn. Damn. Oh, oh, we just chopped that fish in half. And that ain't even the, that's not even the dragon slayer. Damn, Mira is just like, let me show off the human form for you. Let me show off guts and how good he looks in this moment. I, I hope you're, I hope you're enjoying this. Oh. Oh. And guts isn't going to tell. I realize, I don't want to believe it, but the band of the hawk is gone. Mm. And they have to lock Casca up. Oh, I hate that. Ugh. I hate that she's literally like this like animal that's trapped up in a cage. I mean, I understand why Miura had to write her out of the story because she can't go with Guts on this journey. I assume he didn't want to kill her because Guts needs motivation. And... I mean, he could have done worse to her, I suppose, but it's just kind of sad that she doesn't have her memories and she's just kind of this, she's not even, the part that I hate the most is that it's not like she's even like talking to him, like losing her memory would be one thing where she's like, oh, I don't remember what's going on. Can you talk to me? And he's like, you know, I can't really say much. It's one thing for her just to lose her memory, but she's lost the ability to even act like a human being. She just acts like an animal and that kind of like, it's not objectification, but it's like dehumanizing this the one female character in the story it definitely shows Mira has no clue what to do with female characters just saying it's it's sad I don't like it uh. oh what are you doing you idiot why but why like she spills the stuff on her and then it rips the dress and he sees the brand. But why did she have, why do we gotta get boobs? Was, was Mira under a requirement that we have to show female breasts like every chapter or it can't get published? Like she's just sick. She's licking the soup like a dog. Like what? <sighs> Disappointing. Ugh. And then he tries to get near her, but she don't even know him at this point. Mira, I, I get you're trying to torture your main character. You're torturing your main character. The woman that Guts loves, she no longer recognizes him. But I think he could have had Casca have this moment where she's vulnerable and doesn't want to be near Guts. And she's like, I don't know you. Who are you? Get away from me. But making her like not being able to use human speech and acting like a dog. Ugh. I mean, like, I get you, Guts. I get why you'd be frustrated about that. But I just, I don't know what it's going to do. She's going to be like this. What's it going to do for her? I don't know. 
I'm just very disappointed at Mira for that. <laughs> for that entire segment. Why? Anyway, let's just get away from these. I'm just, I, this is why I like stories without female characters sometimes because I'm like, well, you can't hurt them if they're not there. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. Can you use knives? I had judo teach me the ropes a long time ago. It's not my style. So it's as far as we went. Might be something I'll need this time. Oh, I do like his cape and his armor. That's pretty cool. Oh. Say, why are clothes all black? I'll be fighting in dark places and they are in the darkness. Yeah, I love that he's just all dressed in black so that he can't be seen. Mm. Oh, and Rickard, he's like, yeah. Give me your left arm. Oh, I love that he gives him the arm. I love that Rickard gives him the arm. Oh, it's really rugged. And she's like, I helped too. Erica's like, I helped make it too. It's made from Mr. Goto's storehouse. And it's magnetized so it can grip a sword too. Oh, that's really handy. Look at you, Rickert. Oh, little reason why it's rugged. Oh, let Rickert and Erica be safe. Please, Mira. Okay. Oh, and this is where they're testing out the thing he's going to use against the Fief Lord. Oh, that was a close call. I owe you a lot. I'll make him work off the cost and food is our. I love that Rickard's got to work it off. He's like, I love Godo's like, oh, don't worry, Guts. Everything you've gotten, Rickard's going to work off the cost of it. And Rickard's like, what? <laughs> He's basically playing matchmaker for his daughter, right? My farewell gift. I don't know who you're going to fight where, but you won't go far without this. I just forged it. It ain't my best, but it's damn fine. Ah, oh, Godo. Oh, I love it. But are they going to give him the Dragon Slayer? Uh. Oh, wow. He, like, cut the sword in half. Ew. Ew, what is this business? Oh, because it's getting close to him. But is he going to use the, the Dragon Slayer sword? Isn't he going to take that with him? Uh. Oh, leftovers, yeah. He's my guest. Oh, no, and Casca. Oh, I hate it. Ugh. He who hunts dragons. Oh, my God. Okay, so then it's going to become a monster. Of course it is. What the fudge? I did not, I did not want demon booty in this shot. Why? You're a uh, okay. The first one. Oh, he's like I'm blacking out any fear. Oh my god. Oh, that's such a good shot. Oh, Mira. Like just the the line work and all of this. Chef's kiss. Oh, even just the motion. It's like it goes from static to having all these lines of motion. Oh, my God. And again, we talked um, in previous volumes about the demons having two faces. And here they have two faces here. Wow. But is it going to work? He's going to need the demon. He's going to need the dragon slaying sword. This feel, will it work? What in damnation? It's wild game. The first in my hunt. Yeah, he's like, this is the first one. This is bad. I doubt it would nick no matter how many people he cuts it with, but I didn't make it for cutting inhuman things. Oh, he's going to need the dragon slayer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yep. Oh, shit. And the sword's gone. Crap. Damn it. Ew, its guts are all spilled out everywhere. Ew. No. Ugh. Oh, no. Ew. It's like got this pig, like a bulldog and a pig together. Oh, shit. If I'm going to buy it in a place like this, then why the hell did I survive? Oh, God, that whole thing. Guts is like, if I've made it this far, then why? And I like that Rickard's like, okay, use the artificial hand. Point the thing at it. The thing that I gave you. Yeah, there we go. 
Okay, it's a cannon. Oh no, his shoulder's out of joint. Shit, because he fired it and it like, ah, oh, crap. Nope. He's like, too much gunpowder. There we go. Yep, the dragon slayer. There we go. Well, we lost two eyeballs immediately, so there's that. I love that Miura draws like these horrifically grotesque, gross drawings, but then there's Rickert and Erica like, <laughs> like so cartoonish. It's it's kind of cute. It's like Miura's like, okay, all this page is just gore and guts and gross. So I need like one little moment of levity. Oh my gosh. <gasps> there we go. And that's it. Just ah, oh, Dragon Slayer. I love the swords called Dragon Slayer. Love it. And he's all in black. There we go. Damn. You held out on me, Goto. You got something much better suited to my fight. You're just full of surprises. I like Goto's like, shit. <laughs> Goto's like, well, I, I was just going to sit here. So my magnum opus, you want to take that with you? You go right ahead, man. And just the, the literal guts hanging off of Guts' sword. I, what can we do? Wow. Guts is scary. Yeah, he is. Dragons are dragons because humans can't beat them. So what's a man who beats dragons? Mm. Well, that's going to be the thing, right? That's the question. Are you going to say anything to Casca? Maybe you should stay here. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to admit it. But the band of the hawk is gone. I love guts with the hood, like the cape. The black cape around him. Mm. Poor Rickert. I mean, I know it sounds harsh, but instead of getting revenge for dead people, you should be with Casca now. It's not over. The Band of the Hawk isn't gone yet. Not yet. We're still here. This war isn't over. You have to take care of Casca. She's our leader. Protect her. Oh, I'm captain of the raiders. So I'll raid the enemy camp, right? So Rickard's like judo now, where he's watching over Casca. Because she's the leader. Oh, our damn feminist icon, Guts! Mm. Oh, he's so good. He's like, I'm just the raider. Revenge, war. Maybe any reason was good enough. But one thing's for sure right now, there's a dismal rage inside of me. And that's all there is supporting these two feet and it pushes me to walk onward. Yeah, Guts is like, he tells Rickert what Rickert needs to hear. He's like, look, Casca's our leader. You're going to watch over because she's not in a good place right now. I'm going to be the, the captain who goes in and fights on the forefront, on the front lines. And that's what Rickert needs to hear. But Guts is like, look... Whether it's, he's like, you know, he's like, revenge, war, I can say whatever my reason is. He's like, but I just have this rage inside of me at what's happened. And I have to keep moving forward. If I stay here, it's, then nothing's going to be done. And honestly, all the demons are coming for him. So I, I'm a little bit worried about Casca, you know, but as long as they keep her in the cellar, it should be okay. I'm still a little worried, but damn, he who hunts dragons. But setting it up, setting up Guts, leaving Casca and Rickard and Erica behind to go after the monsters that destroyed their lives. You know, fun times. Oh. On that day, the dead sung hung over all nations. Conviction arc! Lost children chapter. The black swordsman once more. What? <laughs> what? Ooh, what? What's happening? What's happening during this eclipse? Oh, look at these knights in their fancy horse hoods with their all their armor and everything. The Midland border region. 
Oh, and this is after the eclipse. Wow. Okay, so after that happens. Seems like a bad omen. Interesting. So what now? Oh, the holy, the holy iron chain knights. What is the army of the holy sea here? The holy sea is essentially the central government of the papacy. Oh. Hey, hey, the mother pilgrim back there was quite the beauty. Is she your type? Vice Commander Azen. I'll bet she's a war widow. Mind yourself, Serpico. How precisely, how do you regard this duty of apocalyptic inquiry? A miracle of our solemn and dreadful God is before our eyes and you let them stray over a mere woman, you ungrateful dog. Oh, you're so uptight. Awkward old men are pitiful, you know. This is why you're still single at your age. Who is this? What is it? Okay, so this is um, Azon and Serpico. So Serpico, Azon. Okay, so the command Azon is the one that looks kind of like a pig. Looks like Porco Rosso um, in the armor. And then Serpico. Serpico seems like a serpent. So, which he kind of has like a, a geen face from Bleach. Kind of like a little snake face. Interesting. It's none of your concern. I'm something of a clergyman, so I have no intention of wedding. Well, clergymen, yeah, I'm not going to assume Serpico sexuality, but sure. We'll see if he deals with the metrosexual knights in such ways. That's not fashionable these days. And then you two, could you put an end to it? We're on a mission. Oh, so is that a woman? I mean, that, that horse has a unicorn armor, and I would be dying for that, not lying. I like the shamrocks on the... I like the shamrocks on the armor and the entrails, too. And also, the helmet has, like, an angel woman, like, an angel on the front of it. I like the design. It says she's got angry. Okay, so it is a woman. Interesting. I love her helmet. Yes, please. Please let this be a decent woman character. <laughs> please, Mira, give us one of those. Please, that will live longer than 10 volumes. Oh, shit. And now we're seeing the remnants of the eclipse from the cyclone. Damn. The Red Lake has appeared as prophesized. Now, here's this is the fun thing about the whole prophecy is that it's just history repeating itself because when there was an eclipse before and they had the cyclone and the behelot was activated in previous times, I'm assuming that a red lake of blood was left behind because of all the demons eating the sacrifices. So that all makes sense. So, okay. So we have uh, on this brand, we have Azon. We have Serpico. And we have our third person who doesn't have a name yet. And they are the Holy Chain Knights. Nice. Okay. I want to know who this lady knight with the shamrocks is. They seem interesting. Ooh! Ooh, okay. It is, no mistake, it surely is the lake, the red lake as the prophecy foresold. The lady in the lake. I just think of Monty Python. To think that something like this would really appear. The revelations say that when the sun dies five times, a red lake will appear to the west of the city with a name both new and old. It's proof the fifth angel will alight. Oh! The angel is the hawk of darkness, the master of the sinful black sheep, the king of the blind white sheep. Interesting! I, okay, I'm fascinated now. So they are, we're prophesizing when the God hand becomes complete, meaning they get Griffith, then they'll have this big lake appear. Interesting. The one who shall call down upon the world an age of darkness. Okay. Huh. Well, so they knew about this hawk and everything like before. How did they know? Did the Skull Knight tell them? Is she related to the Skull Knight? How did they know about all of these things? Because, I mean, the whole prophecy and everything, it just seems like, seems like the God Hand was just looking for somebody to fit that criteria. Or could it be that Griffith was the one they were seeking that fit that criteria? I, we talk about how we manipulate destiny and how it just occurs. How do they know all this? Interesting. Oh, 
two years later. We're just gonna do a time jump right now? Two years later, right now? Okay. What? They caught this scrawny kid wandering in the forest. Ew. Again, why? But why? Why all the time? What? Oh. The sport, four spirits. They'd stake people's intestines to a tree and make them walk around it once. Oh my god. It was a sacrifice. Ugh. And this tree is one of them. Ew. All the bumps, don't they look like human faces? They're the faces of people who got nailed to this tree. Oh, gross! What? What? Ew. <laughs> That's so gross! Okay, so two years have passed. We, we don't know who this, th this third person is. We don't know her yet, but we'll just put a mystery mark by her. I, I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Um, so two years later... That Guts has been searching for demons to kill. Okay. It's been, I can't believe it's been two years already. Has he ever gone back to see Casca? Probably not. Okay. Ugh. What are you doing, Dig? Oh my god. Leave her alone. Let's try the ritual thing. Ugh. That boy's sick in the head. Let him be. Uh, what the? What was this? It's like a little spark. Interesting. And Guts is going to appear, right? Right? <gasps> yeah! Oh, there he is with his little boots! Look at his little armored boots! Yes! Wow, he's still got the black cloak. A forest ghost. I love that they call him a ghost. Ooh, okay. I can't even catch a wink. Ugh. Because all he's been doing is fighting. Ugh. Don't screw with me, man. Oh. Was that story true about this tree staking the intestines and all? I can't believe I got out of the rain under something like this. So he hasn't had any sleep. This is none of my business. But you best get out of here now if you don't want to die. Oh my gosh. So I'm, I'm assuming maybe he thinks the demons are coming. Oh. Oh my gosh, and Guts, I hate seeing Guts already, but again, this is how Guts was at the beginning in volume one, where he's so just like indifferent and everything. Like he's had this passion to move forward and keep going, but it's just like over two years has just hardened him more and more. Ugh. Because I'm, th I'm sure he's gonna say that there's gonna be demons coming. One arm's all I got. Oh, and punched him with it. Oh, and all the teeth coming out. Ew. Fake arm made of iron. Oh my gosh, the way that she looks, like her features are so exaggerated. Her eyes are so big. Oh. It's too late. Yeah, the demons are coming because his brand is bleeding. Oh my god. Oh, the tree. Oh shit. Ew. <gasps> Ew. That is so gross. No. What is that? Like just like pumpkin faces. It's like Jack Skellington. Oh, that, cre that tree is so creepy. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh. Oh, and it just thwumped over this man and oh. Bleh. Just like his brain and eyes. And bleh, um, nope. Nope. Oh my God, it's just eating people. Oh my God. That is terrible. That is so terrifying. No, the monster face there. That's so creepy. Oh, uh, I mean, this is better than the bar scene in episode one. The idea of this creepy man-eating tree that Guts just swipes over. I mean, a much better 
use of if he's gonna, you know, save a girl, but oh my god. Oh. It's too wet for firewood. I hate that I hate that Guts like has this humor about him because it's so dark and just like, what can you do? Ooh. Oh my god. That has that design is so creepy. And there's the cover thing, yeah. Massive, thick, heavy, and far too rough. That is what she said. Mm -hmm. I'm done. It was like a slab of raw iron. The Conviction Arc, Lost Children chapter. Yeah, you know, the Black Swordsman once more. It's like, yeah, I lost children, miscarried children, children in the forest, conviction of guts going after Griffith and the Apostles, you know, all, the, all that fun stuff. Two years since the Black Sun appeared. In a certain forest deep within the mountain ravine, there was a monster. Ooh. Uh, and we're going back there. It was a dreadful and fantastic spectacle. Okay, the Conviction Arc, the Lost Children chapter. Elves of the Misty Valley. Ooh, okay, so we established the mountain range. The elves have been deep within it. So are we going to touch back on those elves? Is this how Guts meets Puck? Possibly. Maybe. A man bearing a gigantic sword-like iron slab longer than his own body placed himself before the monster. I love this monster's design. It's so Halloween-y and kooky. I love it. Uh-huh. But it's not going down without a fight, of course. This also establishes the fact that entities that are demonic that have been just hiding in plain sight for years and years will come alive if a sacrifice is near. So that adds a whole nother layer of creep factor to it all. It's like, oh no, this is not good. That's not good at all. Ah. Oh. And just like two years of guts just having to fight. But that's all. Again, we talk about destiny and purpose. Guts always questioning why his purpose seems to be to wield a sword. And why his purpose seems to be to fight. And if it's for this story. I mean that. What do we do with that in terms of destiny? What do we do with that in terms of. Was he always meant to go on this path? What do we do with that? It's just, oh, it's so interesting. I just, ew, the tree and everything, the the head, it looks like Falcor a little bit down there in the corner where Guts has the, the cannon in its mouth. Oh my gosh, ew. Oh, and then it goes off. Okay. Oh, it's so creepy. I, I love Mira's design of this tree monster. It's just, it is top tier. I am living for it. And then he swishes with the cape. Ah, oh, ah, oh. and there we go. Damn. I'm, what can we say? Oh, and then all the spirits come out of it. First, I've seen the sun in three days. Like Kid Rock's playing. I ain't seen sunshine in three damn days. I put your picture away. I'm going to stop that. Uh, ew. But no, it's going to come after the girl at the end because she's a woman. And we can't go one volume of Berserk without a female character getting hurt. Oh. Oh, that's what it was. The little spores. Oh. The Death Strike Bloody Needle. They always howl good and loud when they get one of these. Puck! Oh, there we go. There we go. There, I've missed Puck so much. It was you, Bug, poking your nose into things. Well, that's what I like to do, right? It's not like I asked you to beat up those bandits. It's true, I used you. Who knew that monster be- Oh my god, yeah. Oh. Freak! Freak! I'm no freaky bug. I have to do that after we saved you. Okay, so Puck was with Guts at this point. Cry babies. No. <laughs> I'm so glad Puck's back. Thank God. Oh my God. Thank goodness. So the question is, is this... 
Oh. Misty Valley, an elf from Misty Valley. Misty Valley? Oh. Interesting. Puck doesn't seem to know what that is. Hmm. She, the way she says Misty Valley looks like it's a bad thing. Seems like it's a bad omen. And Puck's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Interesting. First time I pray. Oh, so these guys were trying to get away. Oh. Huh. Oh. Oh, are there all these elves? Oh. What is it? First a monster, now elves. I'm saying some kids' fairy tale. It is a fairy tale. Oh, is this gonna be is this gonna be the elf that scared Rickert? But Puck doesn't exactly look like them. Their wings are a little different. It is this is a fairy tale for children. Oh shit, it is the it is the elf from then. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, the elves of Misty Valley. Ooh. Interesting. They look more moth-like. Puck looks more like a butterfly um, than a moth than this one. This one looks like a lunar moth. Also has like a little bit more sinister quality to it, so. But it says these elves chase off. They said, Godo said the elves chased, or the Skull Knight said, rather, that the Misty Valley elves that Godo had seemed to know about chased away darkness. So, but this one, if it's the same one that scared Rickert, like, attracted people to the darkness. So, I, I wouldn't be surprised if something that had once been a symbol of light and being an ally to Guts was now tainted by the darkness. Wouldn't be surprised by that at all. In Berserk. But interesting. But Puck doesn't seem to know what they're talking about. So Puck might be an elf from a different valley instead of this one. So we'll see. I like this idea that we're setting up little elven lore and that Puck and this elf might be different, you know, different tribes. So, hmm. And this is my village. Oh, I like that Guts gave her his little cloak. I love that. Okay. All these lost children chapters. Oh. Yeah, and the fountain and everything is dry. It's run down. Oh. Hmm. Jill. Oh, her name's Jill. I like Jill. I want Jill to live. Oh. Where have you been all night? Oh, is that supposed to be her dad? <clears throat> oh, oh, me and my war buddies here. Oh, okay. This is like if the Shire from Lord of the Rings was a hellscape. <laughs> dark side of the Shire because you think of like the guys with the war buddies from and Lord of the Rings like Frodo and all them come back home and everybody's like just having a merry old time no this is like the dark Majora's Mask version of that ew poor Jill and Guts doesn't seem to know why she's upset Guts has a look on his face like ah oh, damn it am I gonna have to get involved in these people's business I don't want to get involved in their business ugh damn it Jill Ew, I hate this. Hmm. Oh. We fought our hearts out so our wives and children could live in safety. I served my country crawling under cannonballs and came away with a bum leg. Ugh. Oh my god! I- Again, we talk about characters in this story. This character here is trying to use his- status as a veteran being like well I fought for your safety so I can be an, an asshole to you and it's okay because you owe me and I'm like that's not how things work and that's not right yeah it's like you can't use what you did to justify actions that are bad towards another person like that's not there's not an equivalent exchange there like just making him an asshole ugh 
those eyes you used to look at the father who risked his life for his family. What was that look for? Yeah, it's just like, be nicer to me. And Guts is like, mm. because it's like the fact that she looks at him with contempt, it reminds me of the Count, the way the daughter looks at the Count. And the Count's like, well, you owe me because of this. And she's like, no, I don't. And I feel like Guts is like, wants to do something, but he's like, I don't want to get involved. And then that's where Puck comes in. Oh, ow. Bloody needle. <laughs> oh, Puck. When did you... Don't sweat the details. I love that he just sits out of the, the knife case. Puck. Hmm. It was this. Oh. He's got an elf with him. What's the deal with those people? What did I do? I won't hurt you again. The elf saved me. He's not from the Misty Valley. Oh. Does your sw kind swarm about and eat crops? And <laughs> Buck's like, no, I didn't. That's not me. Hand over that elf. Oh. I like you. Gun says it's fine by me. And Buck's like, no, it isn't. Why? Otherwise, I'll beat you dead. He's not one of the Misty Valley elves. Oh, boy. Doesn't seem like talking is getting us anywhere. Bloodthirsty eyes. Well, don't just stand there. Skedaddle. Skedaddle. <laughs> Puck! I am literally Puck in this story. I cannot emphasize to you all how much I would be like Puck. I'm like, skedaddle. Just, just skedaddle. Go. Shit, no. Don't break your hoe at him. Oh. Oh. Give me back my grandchild. Oh, Lay, I screwed up. He attacked an old woman. Kick his ass! I mean, on the one hand, respect that the village wants to kick his ass because he hurt a grandma. Respect for that, but maybe they'll calm down if I kill one or two. Oh, no. Oh, I hate that. I hate that Guts, because all he's been doing is attacking demons. He's like, oh, maybe these humans will calm down if I kill one or two of them. It's like, no, Guts, that's not, that's not how this works. But he's just been fighting and using violence nonstop for two years, so he doesn't know any different. It's like, ugh. Death to the elf! Man, the discrimination against elves in this story. Maybe there's a good reason, but... I... Oh! And him raising it up in the air. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh. And then they're just gonna run away. Mm. Why did it turn out like this? I'll get them, those ignoramuses. Some arson, maybe? <laughs> I love Gus just being like, are you serious? I mean, what's the big idea? Catching the charming little elf and beating him to death? They're psychos. It didn't have twisted sex offenders. Usually elves are synonymous with cuteness. When a head or two of cattle gets stolen, ain't it a happy old tradition in the backwood joints like this? Just smile and say, it was just a mischievous elf. Bizarre character, this one. That's supposed to be an elf's privilege. Don't you get that? Someone ought to beat your attitudes into shape. Keep your chin down. Grit your teeth. I am Puck. I I can't, again, emphasize this to you all enough that I am Puck. <laughs> Are you done yet? When did my satchel become your nest? I don't sweat the details. Just think of having a, picked up a good luck charm. It means you're lucky. Mr. Swordsman, little elf. I love her like, ah. Oh my God. Thank God Puck is back. I, I I don't know if I could take another volume without Puck at this point. My luck. My luck just took a nosedive. So they, they just met. That's adorable. I finally had warned you ahead of time. No kidding. I missed out on some valuable info. I'm Puck. Are you okay, Jill? You can hide in that old windmill shed. No one has used it since it broke down. Jill, right. If you come, do it towards morning. Do not come near me before dawn breaks, no matter what. I doubt you want a repeat of last night. Yeah, he's like, don't come to me at night. what I tell you? Ugh. But she doesn't want to be stuck in there during night because her dad's an asshole. Ugh. Oh, my God. Oh. 
She uses Guts's cloak. Why? Why? Why is it so far in this entire story? Female knight that we met that has no name is the only one that has not been assaulted or demeaned or suffers horrifically for prolonged periods of time. I I don't at this point want to know the female knight of the Holy Chain Knights because I'm afraid that I'm afraid that they'll be, you know, hurt. Girl, why he told you not to come at night? Oh. Oh, wow. All the demons. Uh, I don't think that's his kid. I don't think that's it at all. I think it's just random demons that disappear. Oh, because of, of the light. Oh, oh. Let him be a while. He just fell asleep a minute ago. A black swordsman with an elf. He's come from some strange world. Some place I don't know other than here. Jill. Mm. Oh, man. And Jill giving him his cloak back. Damn. And yeah, oh, and it's sunlight. So the demons all disappear in the sunlight. Okay. Oh, bless his heart. The Conviction Arc, Lost Children Chapter by Air. Oh, and is that one of those little things that tries to like feed off of his fear? <laughs> yeah, and he smashes it. Oh. After four days. Oh. She fell asleep beside him. Like, the hilt of his sword is like half the size of her. But she's got the bruises and everything. Oh, and of course, of course, Guts feels bad because he's like, well, damn it, I can't shoo her away. She's been abused. Ugh. I thought that was interesting that they described Griffith as master of the black sinful sheep and like master of the black sinful sheep and king of the white sheep. So I'm assuming like the sinful sheep are the demons and king of humans is what he's supposed to be. Maybe. Oh no, I like this demon tries to like get Puck and knocks him over, but he doesn't eat Puck. So the demons don't necessarily hurt Puck. Interesting. Mm. Why don't you tell me about the Misty Valley? <laughs> As Puck's asleep. The valley in the east of this village over three mountains. For some strange reason, a mist hangs there all year round. So everyone calls it the Misty Valley. There's a legend that elves have lived there for a long time. Hmm. But wait, why does everyone get that look on their face when anybody mentions elves? Did something happen? I guess some weird swarm did go rampaging in the fields. Oh, rude. We'd never do that. For some years now, the villages in this area have been attacked by mysterious creatures. Fields and storehouses are attacked and crops devoured. Lots of livestock are killed, too. Everyone who, seems to, who sees them says the same thing, that they're elves. It must be the elves in the Misty Valley. I wonder if they're like elves that have been... Is it possible elves can get possessed by demons? It The Skull Knight made it sound like the elves would repel demons. But, I mean, maybe it's just like people where good people can still get possessed by demons and elves can be? I don't know. Maybe they're not elves, but they're demons that look like elves? That's nuts! Oh, Buck! It can't be elves attacking human villages... Elves naturally do all they can to avoid being seen by humans. What are you babbling about? That must be some kind of mistake. Have you ever seen him, Jill? Yes, my village has been attacked many times. They're small and they faintly... Oh. they small and they glow faintly. There are insect wings on their back and they're shaped like people. We've got a match! <laughs> Harmful bug! But something's not right. Something is strange and I don't think it's true. Y'all are just too kind. I do declare. I do declare. I'm useful. You see, you see. But it's true that damage has been done, not just to field and livestock. There's another reason everyone in the village is scared. Those little ones also attack humans and eat them. And they carry off children. Well, that was the creepiest page ever. I think that 
Okay, I think that what the moths and everything, I think that Puck is an elf and maybe the Misty Valley elves are actually demons that just look like elves. Kind of like demons can look like humans. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Are we going to go investigate? I want us to go investigate. Oh. Oh, oh my God. And the brand, of course. Oh, what? what, what? Oh, well, ask and you shall receive. There they be. Oh, my gosh. Oh. So what do we do? Oh. Uh, that's them. They're headed for Jill's village. What do you do? They ain't pesky little elves. There's something else. Oh my God. I don't like that face guts makes. Nope. I don't like that face at all. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So they, they're demons because Puck doesn't make guts brand react, but these elves do. Okay. That's really interesting. So that's a bit of foreshadowing from back with Rickert where Rickert freaked out about the little moth, you know, demon. And that makes sense now. And that's, and poor, poor Puck. Rickert freaks out around Puck and Puck's like, I didn't do anything to you, right? Interesting. It's interesting that Puck, the elves don't want to be seen, but Puck is being seen by many. But then again, Puck was with the traveling circus and around humans a lot, so may not know any better. Oh, the elves are here. Oh, shit! Oh, no! Oh, my God! They're just, like, devouring. They're like locusts. They're just devouring everything. Oh, my God! What the fudge? What the fudge? Ew! No! No! Oh my god! <gasps> Bl oh my god! What? Oh, they just oh, they crawled out of their, they cr crawled out of their mouths and eyeballs. Oh my god! Oh. On this week's installment of Romania is grossed out by Miura's artwork. <laughs> we have this shit. Oh my God. No. Oh. Oh no. Jill's out there. Oh no, Thomas. Let's play. Oh my God. Come play with us. Oh my God. Stay down, kid. Oh my God! By air, that makes sense now. Oh my God, he's just like smashing him like a baseball bat. What the fudge? Okay. Elf bugs. Oh my gosh. Guts, our feminist icon, protector of children. Let's go, Guts. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Let's play. Come play with us. Yeah. No, they're not elves. They're like little moths. Ew. Do you want revenge for mommy and daddy? Or do you want to go with these things? Then you're going to help out then. What? Guts. What? No, wait, wait, wait. Oh my God. I'm telling you, it's best to sit tight at the windmill instead. It's dangerous. I like that Puck is actively trying to like tell people Guts isn't that bad. And then they come and see like this kid on the sword and Puck's like, ah, son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh. Is he going to just use the kid as bait and then squash him? Oh, there he goes again. Oh, he's luring them. Okay. What the fudge? Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Wait, wait. Guts, what are you going to do with this kid? Oh my gosh. I wish we could see this animated. I wish we could see this animated. This scene would have been really, really good. Oh, ew. <gasps> okay, it's a pig and a cow. Oh, don't move. 
He's just gonna like. Oh my god! Ew! Oh no! Boring, boring, boring. Yeah, yeah. They're demons. Yep, some kind of vermin. I like that they go from being like little moths and butterflies to like wasps, and just ugh. Agreed. Wasps are pointless. Oh, what are you gonna do with this? Oh, it's gunpowder. Yes. Oh, yep. Yeah, blow them all up. You can't swipe them all for your sword, so just burn them all. Damn, get that kid out of there. I feel like this would be like an, an episode of The Walking Dead. I don't know. The idea of it being in a barn, if you've watched season two of The Walking Dead, it just, that barn feels like a set piece from that series. I, just so crazy. Oh. You made a good lure boy. Mm. And the bugs burning. Ugh. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because in this moment, again, Gut saved that kid's life, but he just used him and basically told him that those demons had to go. I feel like this is the um, I just finished Monster by Urasawa. And in Monster, the main character, like everywhere they go, and this isn't really a spoiler, it's just the main character, wherever they go, they kind of touch the lives of the characters they encounter and they leave them in a better place. <laughs> And Guts is kind of the opposite of that. He, everybody he touches, I'm not sure he leaves in a better place, but he just kind of like in, in like leaves a chunk of his trauma with each of them. Oh. Wow. Okay. And then there's the the head honcho. Berserk, the prototype. This story is a submission piece created by Kentaro Mira during college in 1988. That's the year I was born, so I don't feel old at all, um, which became the basis for what is now Berserk. The establishment of details, worldview, and whatnot differs at points from the Berserk series being published today, but the intent is still present in this early incarnation. We decided to print it now that the Band of the Hawk story arc has concluded. Oh, okay. So is this before... Is this before... Um, before the end of volume five. I want to check real quick. I know I said I wouldn't look at table of contents, but I want to just check real quick and see if it is to know if there's anything past that. Okay, it is. Good. So, dang it. So the volume is going to end with the damn Mothra showing up. Uh, we're going to have to wait till volume 15 for that. But I do want to look at this prototype in 1988. Wow, yeah, the, uh, oh my gosh, for the scarecrows. Wow, Mira's style's already very different. Oh, but Puck is with him. Oh, interesting. I like this steak here. Is this, is this Griffith? Like as a girl motif that looks like if Griffith was a little girl. Wow. Wow. Like Mira's style is here, but it's much more. It It's much more like the line work is much more fine. Wow. Huh. That looks like Griffith. Oh my gosh. Guts looks so different. I mean, the, the scowl is there, the nose is there, but the hair is not defined. Wow, interesting. Okay, and they have an eye patch. I kind of like that they ditched the eye patch and it's just Guts' eye being closed. I kind of like that. Oh, wow, huh. But like still, it, it they have a little bit more of a Wolfwood vibe from Trigun <laughs> than they do Guts. Man, but the, I mean... The prototype was there. The sword, everything. And Puck was there too. Interesting. Okay. And Puck, wow. Give me a little breathing room. It's so cute. Oh, yep. Oh, man. I love that Puck was always there. Puck was from the start uh, a foil for Guts's, Guts's uh, grumpiness. Ugh. Oh my gosh. I thought you'd be scarier. Don't say I'm a pet. Hmm. Aw. 
Fricka. Oh, Fricka. Fricka looks like Griffith for sure. Wow. Okay. Vlad, Vlad Tepes, a madman. Okay. It took the Lord 500 prisoners, impaled every last one of them on wind stakes and lined them on the border so that everyone saw all of them as a warning. Hmm. Okay. Is there going to be any mention of anybody else? Because this clearly is guts after the Band of the Hawk disbanded. Hmm. I, oh, I like the pug is clinging to Guts' arm. That's really, really cute. The fifth one's your daughter, right? Hmm. I like that Puck is very empathetic to what's going on and Guts still wants just something to drink. He's not really relating to any of this. Oh. Kill the Lord? That's the last thing I thought you'd say. What could you reward me? Avenge my granddaughter. Sorry, old lady. I've got nothing to do with just and generous chivalry. I could care less. Hmm. I like Puck's like, but guts. Huh. Interesting. This isn't too different. It's not too much different from guts from chapter one, but this... the. This guts the way that Mira draws him looks a little bit smarmier and there's not like that tortured soul underneath that you get from volume one of guts. It doesn't have that tortured soul appeal. It just looks more like like a bandit, like a, a devilish rogue, right? Hmm. He calls himself a knight. You jerk, jerk, jerk. The old lady who had a family member killed. You should understand her feelings the most. She'll forget everything once she goes senile. Oh, It's my fault. What's she saying? Could I take something of yours with me? Hmm. Oh, and he gives her the eye patch. Oh my gosh, that look of Puck's Puck being like, look, that is such a look. You want to save her, don't you, Mr. Black Knight? You're only caring about bitterness. You don't even give a damn for what's around you. You selfish scumbag. Oh. Oh. You're gonna live for nothing but dead people. You shouldn't do that. Oh, what does he say here? Oh. That's all I've got. Killing them all is all that keeps me going. I've got no life to spare for other people. Hmm. Interesting. I, I like that little bit of connection to his character in the story where he's like, I've got to keep killing these demons. I don't have room for other people right now. Interesting. Oh, and then that crest. Ooh. Oh, are we going to get into, ooh. what are we getting into with this? Oh my gosh. He looks like the count. Interesting. Vlad Tepes. Hmm. Is he going to become a demon? What are we going to do with this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Look at guts. Look at that pose of guts propped up against that column. That looks so good. That big giant smile that he draws Guts having is so crazy. Ew! Oh my god, why is he pulling the eyeball out? No! Moomin's gonna be like, and another one right there. Ew! Wow, and this whole setup looks a lot like the Count when he faced Guts, so that's interesting that this was the prototype. Okay. A trifle. You seem to like impaling, lard ass. Oh my god, I love Puck's like guts. Come on. Oh my god, like he's just like impaled. Oh. Ugh. 
You dog of Vuana. What is Vuana? Maybe that was something he was just debating with before he did the actual so- story. What? The Lord of we who are not human, the most powerful God of this world, the name of the ancient God of darkness, Vuana. What? Oh my God, that design is so insane. Okay, so Vuana, um, we're just gonna put it here. We're just gonna put it up here. Supposedly Vuana is like a guard of darkness. If that's gonna translate to the actual story, if it was just for this prototype, we don't know. I don't wanna know from you all. We'll find out, but I'm just gonna keep that filed in the back of my brain. But that design is incredible. Oh my God, the line work of that is insanity. Oh, let's do this hog bowl. Oh my God. Oh, wow. You know, Mira just decided to just draw this in college. No big deal. It's just like just something he whipped up one day. Oh my God, this is insane. The line work is incredible. I was going to mince you. You're only human. And again, we get the mechanisms of the robot arm of everything. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, that's so cool. Damn. Yep. An apostle of Vuana. I wonder if Vuana became Femto. Maybe, we'll see. Or if Vuana is like the leader of the God Hand. Who knows? Interesting. Oh, wow. And then he has like showing his, his brand is on his chest there. Oh, interesting. Who else but a human would hate you bastards so much? Oh, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I kind of like the idea that that Miura originally had the brand on Guts's it's on Guts's right chest here his pec here and Casca is over here so I kind of I don't know if I would have liked them to have couples brands <laughs> where, where they were like on different different pecs but it being on his neck I guess makes a little bit more sense because it's more convenient story-wise to tell that there's an enemy approaching if you can see his neck. That way he doesn't have to be shirtless the whole time, but you know, I get the logistics of it. Oh. He says nothing. Guts was scary a lot more than Vuana's apostle. He looked sinister. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I'm glad that Miura went forward and made it to where he could flesh out Guts's character in this story. Because, yeah, if you just watched the first couple volumes, you'd be like, well, but Guts is so sinister and scary. What's the point? What's the deal? What more is there to it? And this volume, like as you go through Berserk, you're slowly realizing why Guts has to be like this to keep moving forward, to keep fighting the demons. It's like he's has to be a monster to fight a monster. So, hmm. So that was volume uh, 14. I, I, I'm sad the Skull Knight is gone. I'm sad the Skull Knight has run away for right now. I was really getting used to the Skull Knight being there. But of course, when you have a character as cool as the Skull Knight, they can't just pop up and stay because then the mystery would be gone. So whatever. Um, I am interested that the Holy Chain Knights are introduced, Azan and Serpia, Serpico and the woman, and they all seem to know, the Holy Chain Knights seem to know about this whole prophecy and about all the stuff that was going to happen before it happened, so that's fascinating. I'm curious to know if they are going to be related to the Skull Knight or to Gaiseric, or if they're one and the same, or how that's going to play out. We don't get to know the girl's name, but she seems like she's going to be a figure in this. Um, Rickert and Erica seem like they're match made in heaven. I'm all for that. That's great. Um, I like Jill. 
I like Jill, him rescuing her. Um, this volume ended before we could have like the bugs <laughs> getting resolved. So these, I like that something from the anime is still coming back into play here and getting resolved. That's going to be interesting. So we'll see about that. I wonder if this moth-like demon is going to mention that they were there when Griffith and all them came forth. I wonder if they're going to mention that. I wonder if they're going to mention Rickert. I don't know. I don't know. Um, thank God Puck is back. <laughs> I'm so glad Puck is back. Ah, I, I don't know at this point if we're looking at this story from the sense of... I, what I don't know at this point, and we're probably going to find out next volume, is... Puck returning everything. Is this Griff? Is this Guts just meeting Puck for the first time? It seems to be the case. And then after this volume, we might go back to where we started with it being um, Guts after all this Golden Age arc backstory and everything. We're now back to the beginning. I think that's where we're going to go. I think we're going to end this fight with the moth demons with Puck agreeing to go with Guts. And I think that's why they show the prototype now because it's setting up that first encounter and, and tying us back to the beginning, right? We're back to where we started, right? I feel like that's where we're going. We're after this next volume, we're going to be back where we started and then we move forward from there, right? The one thing about this volume that sucks is the demon infant. It's not even the demon infant because the, de the demon infant part was disturbing and gross, but it being Guts and Casca's child, potentially, that Griffith screwed over. Another thing Griffith has done wrong. Um, in that regard, it just adds insult to injury to Guts. And I don't... the If the baby, if the infant is Guts and Casca's that's been turned into a demon and dying because of Griffith, I'm fine with that narratively. If it was... Griffith and Casca's and like it goes to Griffith and becomes like his little princeling. No, no, thank you. Um, then I'd have a little bit of a problem with it. But I think my overall problem is just the fact that Casca is just not her anymore. She doesn't, Casca's dead, essentially. She doesn't have her memories. She's not even acting like a human. She doesn't even know human speech anymore. Um, she doesn't love guts. It's just... I just don't understand why Casca's even alive at this point because I don't think she's ever going to be what she was before. And that is the part that sucks. The, I, it sucks because at least if she was dead, if she were dead, at least like her memory would still be intact. Like the memory of Casca as a leader, as the beautiful and brave and powerful soldier that she was, that would still live on. And now she's just reduced to this just object. And it sucks so much that I was actually very happy we're leaving her. I'm like, my fear is that an apostle is going to find her and possibly hurt Rickert and Erica, which I don't want. Possibly kill Godo, which I don't want. Um, possibly take Casca and bring her to Femto, which I don't want. I feel like there's a chance of all that happening. And Mira just had to write her out of the story for a moment. And I'm like, uh, so... That part was hard, but I'm glad we're we're getting away from that for now. I hate that, but the farther away from it we are, the better. Um, and I'm glad Puck's back, so trade-off, <laughs> I guess. But I, I'm really excited to hear your thoughts about this volume below. We're, we're getting into some new territory, and I'm glad we're tying back to things from the Eclipse. That feels very thematic, but yeah. So... Um, I hope you all enjoyed this. If you got a chance to see the eclipse today, I hope you enjoyed it. I thoroughly did myself, but yeah. So um, in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah. I'll be back next week with volume 15. We're going to finish deluxe volume 5 of Berserk. See ya. Bye.